Hello, this is Philip Jewell for Blue Hat TV. The Ido Jorg Museum in Indianapolis, Indiana recently held its 18th annual Indian Market and Festival, and we were there. The museum opened in 1989 and showcases Native American and Western art and cultural objects. Its large collection includes both historic and contemporary Native American and Western art. The 118,000 square foot facility was designed by architect Jonathan Hess. The exterior consists of nearly 12,000 pieces of hand-picked Minnesota dolomite and a beautiful plum-colored German sandstone at its base. The museum is located in White River State Park and the back of the museum faces the Indianapolis Central Canal. The Indian Market is a two-day event that features art by more than 130 native artists from more than 60 tribes. I spoke with artist Amado Pena. He told me about his award-winning artwork entitled The Collectors. The piece that got first place, uh, it's actually a mixed media drawing. I used uh, a variety of processes, uh, so it's not traditionally uh, a drawing as most people think. But the materials, all of the materials are drawing materials. For example, I used uh, uh, liquid colored inks, as well as in just black India ink. I used uh, uh, a Prismacolor pencil, which is an oil-based base drawing pencil, and I finished it off by using oil pastels. It's a composition of a native sitting in a chair, and in the background, instead of the Sasan, which we originally did, I put one of my paintings symbolizing that this character collected, the character represents the artist, T.C. Cannon, uh, and so the character sits in a chair, and in the background there's one of my paintings, hence uh, symbolizing that he collected my work. And then in the foreground is actually a self-portrait in a profile form of me looking at his painting, which symbolizes that I collect his work, because in reality I did, I do have this particular painting in my collection, and hence the title of the painting is called The Collectors. Ancient pottery shards are replicated into silver by Laguna Pueblo silversmith Mark Stevens. He told me about his pottery shard collection and how it led to the idea. While I was working in my shop um, trying to create new designs, uh, I was inspired by these ancient pottery shards that we have scattered all over the reservation. These shards uh, depict the art of our ancestors thousand years ago and I was fascinated by these pieces, so I used to collect them and save them in my shop, just put them in a bucket and preserve them, really. But one day, uh, in February of 2007, the idea came to me to replicate these pieces in silver jewelry. And so I tried it out, and uh, it took probably about two weeks to make the first piece. When I did, I took it to San Francisco to a show. It sold and was very, very popular. So I had two weeks to work till my next show, uh, two weeks later in, in Fort Worth, Texas, I went home and I made six pieces working day and night. Uh, I got to Fort Worth for the show. They all sold within the first couple of hours and I had a huge response to them. And that's when I realized that I thought I was onto something new and different. So I, I continued to run with this idea. And it's been three and a half years now and I've replicated over 650 shards as one of a kind pieces. And now this is what my work is known for. So. Um, I continue to do this. I, I still continue to find these shards on my reservation and, and as a respect and honoring to those uh, that created this work, I actually return these pieces to the land when I'm finished with them. I replicate the pieces as one of a kind uh, pieces of art and when I sell the finished product, the original shards get returned to Laguna. 
Salish artist Peter Boone spoke with me about his silk screen prints and his background as an artist and as a printmaker. My father-in-law's cousin is Andy Peterson. He's a pretty well-known artist in the Northwest. Uh, he's a Skokomish artist. And he had just started printing his own work. And I brought a bunch of paintings to him and I asked him, I said, hey Andy, would you, would you print these for me? He goes, no, but you can come on over and print them yourself. And he showed me the basics, and I just, uh, I fell in love with the, the, I fell in love with it. Not long after that, within a couple of months, I, I took basically my entire life savings and put it, everything I had into creating, uh, getting equipment and uh, things so that I could print myself and print my own work. And when I did that, I was very, very fortunate, and the work just took off. In 1979, Stan Green was the first one to actually print Salish work. And, and Susan Point followed a year later. Andy Peterson followed right after that. And he was the first one to create new designs based on Salish work. And I'm the second generation of Salish artists. And we're really pushing the, the envelope. We're, we're using a very old historic design style. And we're creating new works with it. And we're doing new things with it. And we're trying to... Uh, blend the old and the new because the way I look at it is art is a reflection of culture but it is also the direction of culture it, and culture is malleable, it changes, it moves and so we as artists need to be malleable and change and move with it. If you'd like information about the Idlejorg Museum Indian Market, visit the museum's website at idlejorg.org. The website addresses of the museum and today's featured artists are included in the upcoming program credits. On our next show, we will be revisiting the 2010 Tucson Gem and Mineral Show. You may view additional Blue Hat TV videos at bluehat.tv or visit our regular website at bluehat.biz and click on the video blog link. Thanks for watching Blue Hat TV. Blue Hat.